Wednesday at Paul Ricard launched the McLaren Trophy Europe and this is race two here on Sunday afternoon. A very, very quick change from red to green and Thomas Pintos absolutely nails it from the start of the grid. Joe Osborne appears to have gone right past uh, Ewan Hankey and in fact he's not hanging around. Joe Osborne didn't get to race yesterday and he takes the lead. There was then contact uh, behind him. It looks like Ewan Hankey had, had a little bit of a rub with Thomas Pintos but Joe Osborne was talking about the track still being greasy on the outlap and that is brave brave driving. He's nailed it, got the lead and held on through turns one and two that had far less grip than he'd been hoping for. About two, three, four car lengths to the clear it, stretching his legs up to the crest of the hill there at Seniors. Oh, actually, maybe he got tapped up the rear. Oh, that's not quite how it left the, left the factory, but despite that, well, maybe that was Thomas Pintos got so close to him, he then backed it off, and I thought he also got tanked from behind. Yeah, Joe Osborne there showing some, some aggression there into turn one, but using all his experience and skill to get into the lead and now pulling away a nice uh, margin, but uh, let's hope that that rear diffuser stays where it is. Um, yeah, that's the question mark now for the uh, optimum car. Uh, I think it's the Montreal chicane version up the back straight there, up to the top of the hill, still setting a very good pace. It looks like Charlie Hollings is uh, matching him. In fact, it's not matching, we'll call it catching. We're talking about, actually, he lost two tenths in the first sector. Second sector, Charlie Hollings got it back again. And Ewan Hankey is uh, not too far behind, half a second further back in third place overall. Yeah, and that's uh, Hankey turning in third place. He's just put in the fastest first sector of anyone, so he's got the pace, but he cannot afford to just grab those extra few centimetres off the side of the circuit. So let's get down the order. Joe Osborne leading by 1.8 seconds near enough. Charlie Hollings in second. Ewan Hankey in third. Thomas Pintos just coming to do the metallic... Uh, pale blue car with the orange stripes for golf livery and in behind him is 27 Michael O'Brien Ollie Webb not too far behind him either those cars almost nose to tail Great another scrap we're looking at here Tommy Tom Thomas Pintos in fourth place Michael O'Brien in fifth and the driver is really pressing Ollie Webb disappointed yesterday had that slow puncture that dropped him back but Ewan Hankey is pushing he took the win yesterday today he'll have a shorter uh, stint to do but he's diving up the inside he set the fastest lap of the race so far and he's really seems to have handling where the car in front is not so much Charlie Hollings side by side up the, up the up down the hill they come but that was a very very good move from Ewan Hankey the black and orange warning flag for mechanical problems being shown to car number 12 the race leader Joe Osborne now here's Bradley Ellis driving absolutely beautifully this is a car he shares with David Foster they won the 570s trophy class yesterday and he's putting on another masterful performance and in comes Joe Osborne from the lead of the race this is the car that had rear bodywork damage after contact turning into the first corner was given a hit up the back by the driver who'd started on pole position Thomas Pintos no intent in any of that but unfortunately loose rear bodywork and now one of the rear wings starting to peel up tell us how it's performed on me if you will in the Arturo trophy okay so we have obviously two different classes uh, we have a mandatory stop uh, that lasts 1 minute and 44 seconds for the M's, for the 570 SM entries, and then 1 minute and 49 seconds for the other two. So for, for the 570 S Pro-M and the Altura Trophy, they have a, a minimum time, they have to sit in the pits uh, all together at 1 minute 49 seconds. But of course, we have success ballast from race 1. Um, we have to look at car 77, so that's Ewan Hankey and Hopton. They will, they will have to stay in the pits 1 minute and 56 seconds. Uh, so they get 7 seconds added as success ballast. And 13, the Khalifa and Hollings car, gets 5 seconds added to the pit stop, so that's 1 minute and 54. And then the number 7 uh, car uh, will get 3 seconds, so that's the um, Thomas and Gonzalo car. No, Ewan Hankey is now in the pits, got it in the pit window, is closing in 10 seconds time. First three, Tommy, very close indeed, covered by uh, one and a half, 1.3 seconds from Campbell, Hopton to Andres. Now, this is that classic situation for the driver in second place. That's Mark Hopton. He wants to attack Campbell in front of him, but suddenly he's got to look at his rear because Gonzalo D'Andres in the number seven, Artura, is the quickest driver out there on the track at the moment. Top four cars covered by 2.4 seconds. That's pretty special, isn't it? This is when you, Tommy, you put a championship together, you can work on the format of the car, you hope that it's good in terms of race ability, and also it's got to be good for the AM drivers. But then, as I say that, we have a spin there from our race leader, Ian Campbell. Ironically, the driver who wasn't under pressure, he had a, a margin of one and a bit seconds. Yes, the, tri the trio behind were closing him on him, but just that moment out of turn two where the track drops away, round came the tail, but you know what? In a lot of cars, they might have carried on spinning. Here we had the stripe lines, but picked up a puncture yesterday. Car number 23, the left front, 
And uh, that is very, very frustrating indeed. As it is, we've got to make do with three cars covered by 1.2 seconds. This is that battle for the lead. Mark Hopton, yesterday's winner with you and Hanky. Can they do it again? Gonzalo de Andres, who started on pole, or more to the point, stalled on pole, started dead last, worked his way up the order. He's taken over from Thomas Pintos, and he decided victory might be a good choice for him today. And now a change for the lead of the race, or is it? Number seven is still in behind. Mohamed Khalifa in third place is closed in. So an attempted passing manoeuvre on Mark Hobson by Gonzalo de Andres didn't work. Yeah, we're looking at a move oh. now inside the uh, chicane. Well, it was certainly tighter than ever before as they went into the mid-straight chicane, and that was a phenomenal move from Gonzalo de Andres, just pushing uh, Mark Hopton a little too deep into the corner, and he couldn't get the turning in, and that also gave uh, a chance for Mohamed Al Khalifa, who'll be looking to pounce in number 13 and try and go up the inside. Has a look up the inside, but there isn't an inside. Mark Hopton closes the door. They're still super, super close. One little slip up from any of the lead trio, from De Andres, from Hopton, Al Khalifa, and this order will change. But they are having a really good classic scrap here at Porica. Through the corner for the final corner for the final timing. Oh, the car just flashing across now. The one crossing the line will take the chequered flag, but it won't take victory. The question is, is he still going to be five seconds clear of Mohamed Al Khalifa? Just waiting for confirmation of that. But this is history that has now been made by the McLaren Trophy, launched here this weekend, new championship for 2023, and there was some really good racing. But here are the results overall. Mark Hopton and Ewan Hankey coming clear by 3.3 seconds ahead of the penalised Gonzalo D'Andres and Thomas Pintos. They lost five seconds by exceeding track limits. Mohamed Al Khalifa, Charlie Hollings in third overall, then Thomas Surgent and Michael O'Brien in fourth. Jay Palmer and Joe Osborne with that lightly damaged car. Could have been a winner, hasn't turned out that way. That was the car rebuilt overnight. Albert Jochums and Charles Waltzman complete the top six.